Tiptoe through the tulips with me. I'm Andy Jones, content editor for Plaid's online education program, Let's Paint. And today, we're painting tulips. Come on, let's paint. All right, we're going to begin our tulip design by applying some color around the outside of the design to add some interest since I had painted this on a white metal flower bucket. So I'm going to use Folk Art Acrylics, the original formula, and I'm using Sap Green. I'm going to have a little pure black on my palette and a small amount of burnt umber. And in addition to my Folk Art Acrylics, I'm going to have some Folk Art Blending Gel. And the blending gel is a gel formula retarder. It's nice and thick, so it doesn't make your paints runny, but it will make them slightly transparent, and it will make them um, dry much, much slower. So that's going to give you plenty of time to blend. Now, I'm going to use a very large flat brush, and if this flat brush is way too big for you, then you can step down and use a smaller size brush. But what I want to do is to load my brush so that when I put my color on, I have a really nice wide gradation of paint. So I'm going to pick up some blending gel on my brush and work it through the bristles. When you press the bristles down, you'll see that they spread out, and when you lift, they pull back up, and that helps work the paint up into the brush. You don't have to dive deep into the paint. It's the patting and pressing motion on your palette that works the paint into the bristles. So I'm going to side load my brush and I'm going to sneak into my sap green. And then I'm going to move to a loading zone on the palette. And I'm just patting the color into the brush. And remember to work your color into a loading zone I don't need to paint really long strokes and I don't want to blend here a while and then blend there and then blend there. The object is to work the paint into the brush, not to decorate your palette. Now this green is a nice transparent green color, but it's too vivid for background color. So I'm going to add on the same corner of the brush some burnt umber and that burnt umber is just going to tone that green down so that it's much, much softer. And you can already see that that is a much duller color. It's going to be easier to live with. And then I'm going to add just a very small amount of black to deepen that color. And again, come to my loading zone and blend that color into the brush. So here on my palette, I can already see that I've got a gradation from dark over to clear blending gel. Now, when I begin to apply background color on the surface, I'm simply going to paint next to the outside edge of my design. Just pat the color on, staying out of the design. a little bit of this excess paint off of my brush on the palette, on the paper towel, I'm sorry. And then I can come around here and I'm just patting some of this color on. Again, it's around the outside edge of the palette. Now I'm just going to lay this brush down and I'm going to pick up a scruffy brush from your uh, brush set that's in your kit. It's dry, it has a no paint on it, and sometimes you'll see a few little stray hairs coming out. So you might want to fluff this a little bit before you actually start on your project. And then I'm going to turn this and I'm just going to tap and pounce and soften this color going right up next to the design. And you can see that I get a really nice soft gradation of color. The blending gel is what's going to give me plenty of time for this to blend and soften out. Now any little loose hairs that are there, leave them alone until your background has completely dried and then you can simply come and rub and wipe them away. If you try to get them out now, chances are you're going to make a mess 
in your background color. So again, I'm going to pick up some of the background color and just show you again, I'm going to apply this next to the design. And adding background color is a really nice, easy way to add some interest to your paintings. It's very soft and it gives a beautiful look. So again, with a dry scruffy brush, I'm just going to come in there and slightly pounce and soften this color out. And there you get a beautifully shaded background look. And it's just that easy. And I would do this probably up around there. I wouldn't do it all around the flower with the green. In fact, it's nice to leave some areas that don't have any background color. But you would want to let this dry before you started to paint your leaves. So while we're waiting for our background color to dry, we're going to mix up a nice pink color to undercoat our tulip. So I'm going to put some napful crimson and some true burgundy out on my palette. And I'm also going to put out Folk Arts Titanium White. And we're going to use a metal blade palette knife to mix a nice soft pink color. So I'm going to move some titanium white away from the main puddle of paint. I'm going to make, oh, let me take my brush. I'm just going to park that in some water. And wipe your palette knife off on your paper towel before you go into any other color so that you don't contaminate the other colors on your palette. I'm going to pick up a small amount of Napfall Crimson and I'm going to mix that in. And that's going to give me a really nice kind of bubblegum pink color. It's still a little bit light. So I'm going to wipe my palette knife off. You always want to be in the habit of wiping your palette knife off when you finished mixing before you go into a puddle of paint. I'm going to add a little bit more Napthal Crimson because I want this pink color to be a medium value or a medium light value. It's a little closer. Still not a very interesting pink color. So, oh, need to mix that in. All right, going to wipe my palette knife off again. And now I'm going to pick up a very small amount of True Burgundy. And we're going to mix that in. And that's going to make this a little bit more on the pinkish purple side. I'm going to need a little bit more than that to make it noticeable. Again, always wipe your palette knife before you go into a puddle of paint. So adding some True Burgundy and mixing that in. Now, I'm going to take a small flat, well, I say a small flat brush. Probably for you, it's going to be a medium-sized flat brush. I tend to work with very large brushes because I'm comfortable manipulating a brush. But if you feel like you need a little bit more control, you can use a smaller uh, flat brush. But I'm going to pick up some of this pink color, and we're going to undercoat the petals of our tulip with our medium pink color. I'm going to start at the back and I'm going to use my basic brush strokes that I know you all have been practicing to fill in this back petal of the tulip. If it doesn't cover with one coat, don't worry. We're going to let this dry and apply a second coat as we need to. You can leave a little cheat line between your petals just so that you know where everything is. If you happen to cover up your design lines, don't worry about that. We can always come back and retransfer them to the surface. But again, using your basic brush strokes, you will neatly and carefully undercoat the tulip petals. And the more you've practiced with your flat brush, 
the easier all of this will be. Every time you watch one of our studio lessons, you'll probably hear me say something about practicing with your flat brush, having command of it, understanding the fundamentals. And I say that all the time because it's very important that you do master the flat brush. And when you have, it makes painting so much easier for you because you're telling the brush exactly what you want it to do and it's going to do it for you. Again, it's the mastering of flat brush skills that makes it so easy and fast for me to undercoat. Slide the brush down, press, fill in across the bottom. It's really not hard once you understand how to make the brush do exactly what you want it to do. All of the techniques that I'll teach you are learnable and easy to master if you take the time to practice. But you've got to put forth the effort in order to make it easy for you. All right. At this point, uh, we're going to uh, pause filming and I'm going to uh, let my flower dry and I'm going to apply a second coat so that I have a nice opaque coverage and I'm going to undercoat uh, this large uh, leaf at the bottom with a mixture of sap green plus burnt umber and I'll have all of that done when we resume. All right, so I have given my tulip a second coat of medium pink and as you can see, I've come back and added in my design line so that I know where all of my petals are. And I've uh, given a second coat to my leaf and these are thoroughly dry. And we're now going to add the shading to our tulip. And I'm using a flat brush and I'm dipping it in water, blotting it on my paper towel. And I'm going to side load with some true burgundy. And I'm going to pat the brush into the puddle of paint come onto my loading zone and begin to blend that color in place. I'm going to flip the brush over and again pat the color so that I create a gradation of color from strong pink to a clean brush. If you mess up when you're loading it, that's okay. Wipe your brush out, rinse it in your water, then load it again and come back to your painting. And we're going to apply the shading where one petal goes behind another petal. So I'm going to start here and apply my shading and I'm using a padding motion to apply the shading. Picking up more paint as I need it. Turn my work surface. And now I've got very even amounts of shading on there and that is usually not the most attractive thing to have when you're painting a flower. So I'm now just going to pat and now my color is much deeper and that will look much better when I begin to highlight. I'm going to shade where this petal rolls over on itself and you want to pat that color out so that you have some variation in the width of your shading. Again, turn your work and I'm just going to continue to bring that shading on down to the bottom of the tulip. And notice that I'm up on the corner of my brush because I don't want to put my brush all the way down and my brush is much bigger than this section. So working up on the corner, I can just pat and pull that color down. If you're in control of your flat brush, you can do that yourself. All right, so we're going to shade this large petal here where it comes behind these other two. You want to pat the color on my color's a little bit dry on this side, so I'm going to touch the corner of the brush that has paint in it into the water, blot on a paper towel, then come back to my loading zone and pick up some more color on my brush. Then back to the tulip 
and again we're just patting this color on so that we have some variety and variation and the amount of shading that we have on each petal. And don't worry at this point if your shading doesn't look very good. That's perfectly fine. You want to make sure that you have nice dark color. We can uh, clean this up and we will clean this up when we begin our first layer of highlighting. So don't worry about your shading not looking perfect at this point. And come back and add some more dark in there. Again, put it on with a padding motion. Making sure my brush is full of paint. Touch the brush to the water. Blot on a paper towel. Come back to my loading zone. Making sure my brush is full of paint. And then I will come up here and I'll shade where this petal goes behind the front one. Again, working up on the corner of the brush. I'm going to let this dry a little bit before I come back and add the shading there. But I will continue on and add the shading here, patting the color on, making sure that I have nice, good, dark areas. It's very important that you have strong darks, even though this is a very light pastel tulip. If you don't have good, rich, dark color, your highlights will not show up, and it'll be much harder to make your highlights look good. So again, where one petal goes behind another, we're going to pat this color on. And again, not concerned that I have a smooth um, shading on here, just patting that color on. Let's turn this around so I can get into this little area back here. Again, starting up on the corner of my brush and just kind of pulling that along. Turn the work again and I'm going to shade where this petal curls over on itself and get a little shading down here. And then this probably needs a little bit of darkness just on here so that we can have something to build some light color against. And on the front petal of the tulip, we need to establish some dark at the base of the petal. So again, touching my brush to water, blotting it on a paper towel, coming back to my loading zone on my palette, working the color into my brush, and then I'm just going to add some dark color right along the base and just kind of pat and blend that color up. There's a lot of water in my brush, so I'm going to blot it out on a paper towel and then just continue to kind of work that color up into the petal a little bit. And any of these little brush marks and stuff, that's not bothering me at all. I think it's going to add nicely to the overall look of the tulip. Let's get a little dark color coming down here. We're painting just a single tulip here, but if you had a design that had several tulips in, you would want to make sure that some tulips were darker and other tulips were lighter. Some um, pink was a more intense bubblegum pink, some of it was softer, so that you had some variation in your flower. And we're doing that the same sort of thing by having some variation in our petals. Some are going to be darker and others are going to be lighter. All right, but I'm going to let that dry and I'm going to add the shading now onto the leaf. I'm going to pick up some of my pure black and move it to a clean spot on my palette. Wipe my palette knife off, set it aside. And then I've just rinsed my brush lightly in water and I still have some residue of true burgundy on this side of the brush. So that's the side I'm going to put into my pure black. Bounce the brush into the paint, then come onto the palette and create a loading zone. I know I repeat myself a lot, but I really want to drive the point home, sneak into the edge of the paint, pick up the color on one side so that you can create a gradient across the brush, come into a loading zone. Doesn't have to be big, but stay in the same loading zone. Don't keep making lots of 
uh, different loading zones all over your palette because you want to keep the paint in the brush and not decorate your palette. So now that my brush is loaded up with the black, I am going to add the darkest shading where the leaf rolls over on itself and then pat that color out. The contrast is much less between the dark green that we undercoated our leaf and the black than we have with our true burgundy and our bubblegum pink. That's why this shows up so much more than this does. But it's important that you have the dark shading on your leaf as well. And then we'll add the dark shading here. If I could keep my brush inside my design there. Because this is a leaf, I can cheat a little bit and just extend that up a little. If this were something um, inorganic, you can't cheat like that. You have to make sure that you stay with your design. Then pat that color out. Then we also have to shade where this leaf goes behind the leaf in the stem. So just patting that dark color on and softening it out a little bit. Then we need to shade this little back portion of the leaf, just like that. And at this point, if you're working along with me, you probably need to spend a minute catching up. So I'll let you continue to add the shading to your tulip and to your leaf. And I'm going to let mine completely dry. And when we come back, we'll start to develop the highlights on our flower and leaf. Okay, now that we're back, um, my shading is dry on my tulip and on my leaf, and I'm going to add a couple of colors to my palette. I'm going to add some lemon yellow, and I'm going to add a little bit of yellow citron, and we're going to begin to highlight our leaf. So I'm just going to pick up some sap green on a dry brush, move to a little blending area on my palette. Notice that I don't dive deep into the puddle of paint. Always pick it up, pulling the paint away. And what we're going to do with this sap green is we're just going to begin to establish our highlights and soften back into our dark shading. So our first highlight, very sparse amount of paint on the brush, take the excess off on a paper towel, and then we're going to just begin to lightly blend this into our shading. This isn't going to show up very much, but it will soften the look of the shading. So next I'm going to take my sap green and I'm going to add some yellow citron to it, just a very small amount of paint brush mixing this together. And when you're painting yours, I would do the sap green step on all the leaves before I moved on to the next step. I would build all of my leaves up at the same time. So we're blending and mixing some yellow citron in with our sap green. So we want to create a lighter green color. Take the excess paint off on our paper towel. And we want to develop a nice light area here in the widest portion of the leaf and then scrub that back using a light touch and this may be a little bit difficult to see on camera and I apologize for that but we have to move through all of these steps I'm going to add a little bit of light there at the tip of the leaf if I've run out of paint I can pick up some more sap green I can add a little bit more yellow citron to it brush mix the colors together, take the excess paint off on my paper towel, and then gently come back and lightly brush that on. I have to build my light dark contrast here where the leaf rolls over on itself. And then again, soften that light color back into the leaf. Unfortunately, leaves get a bad rap and a lot of designs because people don't take the time to make them interesting. But you should have nice light dark contrast, gradual building of the highlight. The leaves should look beautiful and support your main subject matter. 
Okay, so now I'm going to add even more yellow citron to this because I want to create a lighter value of color. Take the excess paint off on my brush and I'm going to start right out here and very softly feather this light color onto the leaf, softening the color into the shadows, add a little bit of light at the tip. Some of these are going to be subtle value changes. They're not going to be dramatic, but it's important that you build the value slowly. Add more yellow citron. Take the excess paint off the brush. It's important that you have a very sparse amount of paint on the brush. You can see there's not much paint there at all. I touch my brush to the surface. This is your test right here. If the color's too bright, stop. If you can't see the color, stop. If you've got too much paint on your brush, stop. Always checking those things before you continue to build the highlight on your leaf. Very sparse amount of paint, adding a little highlight down there at the end of the leaf. And then we want to make sure that we are making that nice contrast right there where the leaf rolls over on itself. And then we're going to soften that back into the leaf. This time, I'm going to have almost all yellow citron on my brush. So I'm going to wipe my brush off really, really well. I'll even put my brush down, fold my paper towel over it, pinch and pull the brush to get all that excess paint off the exterior of the brush. Then come back, pick up my yellow citron and the color will stay brighter this time. Take the excess paint off on a paper towel. Make sure I have a sparse amount of paint. Do my check and then lightly feather this color onto the leaf. Very sparse amount of paint. Going down here at the base or the tip of the leaf and soften that color on. Want to make sure that I've got a nice light area where this leaf rolls over. As you can see now we're getting a good contrast there between our shadow and our highlights. I'm going to pick up a little bit more yellow citron. Take the excess off on a paper towel. Again, starting here, checking to make sure that I have a lighter value, don't have too much paint on my brush, and then we'll gently feather this color onto the leaf. I know this gets repetitious hearing me say the same thing over and over, but I want to really emphasize the technique for you. And when you start to paint this yourself, Hopefully this will be very second nature and you'll understand exactly what we're doing because you've heard me say it so many times. Check my color. I'm going to create a brighter area of contrast there. Softly feather this back onto the leaf. Now I'm going to introduce some lemon yellow into my highlight. Brush mixing the color. Taking the excess off on my paper towel, have a sparse amount of paint on my brush, begin to brush that color on, starting out here. Again, creating good contrast where the leaf rolls over on itself and softening this into the leaf with a gentle feathery motion. Add a little bit more yellow. And remember, when you're working on this, you'll be doing the same step on all of your leaves. Wanting to make sure I've got a nice, lighter color on my brush. And as you're working through the different values, when you start to add more of the light yellow, and then in just a minute, or right now, we're going to add a little bit of titanium white to this, It'll make a huge, huge value jump, and you'll really start to see your work paying off. So if you start to see that lighter, brighter white color on your leaf, remember to take the excess paint off on your paper towel so you have a sparse amount of paint on your brush, 
and do your test and then soften the color onto your leaves. Add some more white. Brush mix the color. Take the excess off on my paper towel. We need to add a little bit of bright color right up there. And a little bit more light right here in the brightest part of the leaf and just soften that back just a little bit and that's how we paint a tulip leaf. Now I'm going to switch and start to develop the highlights actually on the tulip flower itself. So I need to clean out my brush but I don't want to wash out my brush. I'm going to wipe the brush on a paper towel by folding the paper towel over the brush, press down and pull the brush out that's going to clean all the brush off of the outside, all the paint off the outside of the brush, that is, and then groom the brush back to a nice flat shape. Going to load the brush full of pink paint. That's our undercoat pink. And then I'm going to clean the brush off. This is called neutralizing the brush. In essence, I'm cleaning the brush with pink paint because I don't want to introduce water into our dry brush technique. It's impossible to do a dry brush technique with a wet brush. So my brush is now cleaned out of the greens and we're into the pink. So I'm going to load my brush with the pink color that we undercoated with. I'm going to take the excess paint off on a paper towel because I want a sparse amount of paint on my brush. And this first layer of highlighting is actually more cleaning up our shading. So I'm going to start at the edge of the petal where I want it to be light and just feather some of this pink onto the petals. Again, sparse amount of paint, take the excess off on your paper towel and just feather in from the outside edge. We're going to move around on the flower, softening all of our shading. But you notice that even where I've um, added my first layer of highlighting, you can still see that there's nice dark shadowing on your flower. We are not going to cover up the shading that we worked to put on there. We just want to soften it with our pink color. Always remember you can move your work to make it more comfortable for you to paint. And I'm just skimming a little extra light color down there so that I get a nice division between my petals. I'll soften that. Come right over here to the outside edge and kind of repeat that. Softening the shading as I go. I'm going to move up here to this front petal. Make sure that I get a nice division between these two petals. And I'm going to turn my work. Come back and I'm just going to soften that shading. Still keeping lots of dark shadowing on there. Have a little bit of light to put back here in this petal, even though it's mostly to the rear of the flower, you have to have a little bit of light to help with that, soften that shading up a little bit. All right, now I'm going to add some titanium white to my undercoat pink color to make it a lighter value. Take the excess paint off my brush because I don't want too much paint on my brush. And we're again going to start at the back of the flower and we're going to stroke this lighter color on. I'm not going to come nearly as far down into the shading this time as I did the first time. It seems to me like there's a little too much paint on my brush. So I'm going to take the excess paint off on a paper towel and then soften that into the petal. Out here we need to put a little bit of light color to soften that shading. Always have a sparse amount of paint on your brush 
so that you can see how the paint collects on the ridges of any texture. Take the excess paint off your brush. Once you get the hang of this technique, it goes pretty quickly and it's going to become second nature and it's almost zen-like when you start to do your highlights because you're just, you know what you're doing, you're making it a lighter value, covering a smaller area, sparse amount of paint on your brush, checking it every time you apply it to your flower and you'll just watch your flower petals start to take shape. You'll continue to add highlights where you want your flower petals to be the brightest. Lightly feathering this onto the petal. Adding more white. And you can do this, we're doing a pink tulip here. You could undercoat your tulip with dioxazine violet plus white, make a light purple, then shade with dioxazine violet, and develop your highlights with your undercoat, purple, and white. Um, you can do a yellow tulip, you could do red tulips, doesn't matter what color, you just want a base coat with a medium value color, and then come back and develop your highlights slowly, getting lighter with each application and covering a little bit smaller area and just dusting the color on and you see how we're developing dimension in the flower by creating our light dark contrast between our highlights and our shadows. Sparse amount of paint on your brush. Begin at the outside edge and just feather that highlight into the tulip. Okay, going to come out here to this outside edge and we want to make it nice and bright. So it's getting almost pure white highlights out at the edge. And along this little flip. Going to do the same thing over here. Make sure that we develop some nice contrast where the petal is rolling over on itself. Add a little bit more to my foremost petals. And this is almost pure white. So I'm not going to put too many of these highlights on, but I do want to really make sure that we have some nice light dark contrast. So it's going to make our flower much more interesting. Okay, so that's how we add the highlights to our leaves and our tulips. If you're painting along with me, um, you probably have not moved nearly as fast as I have. So you can finish highlighting your tulip and let that dry. And we'll come back and I'm going to show you how to add a wash of color to sort of change the color of your tulip just a little bit. And then we'll add one last interesting element to our painting. Okay, so you finished highlighting your tulip and it's now thoroughly dry. And I want to show you how you can alter the color of an object with a wash. So I have a flat brush and I've got it saturated with water. I'm gonna blot a little bit of the water out on my uh, paper towel and I'm going to pick up some dioxazine violet, move to a clean spot on my palette and I'm not trying to side load this yet, but what I want to do is to make my color very thin and very transparent. Okay, so now I have uh, what I want, but I don't have it on my brush the way I want it. So I'm going to rinse my brush, blot the excess water off on a paper towel, and I'm going to just stroke into this puddle of super thin paint, and I've got a light transparent wash of color on this corner of the brush. So I'm going to begin just to add some of this purple. Oh, and I was too cautious. Let's make another little puddle there. Okay. 
then I'm just going to add a little wash of this purple and you can see as I stroke this color up that it's changing the whole color of that petal and we can do it over here on this one and you see here how when I move that out that this petal's taken on a little bit more of a purple cast to it. If I like that, I can leave it. If I don't like it and I want it stronger, I can make my wash a little bit stronger. And I can come back and stroke that on and build a brighter purple accent on my tulip. So for instance, if I had painted a blue tulip and wasn't really thrilled with the way it was looking, I could add a little color wash of violet to it. And I'm just going to use my best tool, my finger, just to kind of tap and soften that. But there you can see I've got a really nice purple accent on that petal. It's still a pink tulip, but there's another color that's been introduced there. And I think um, to be able to add a little bit different color is important. And the best and easiest way to do that is generally with a wash. Now I want to add one more element to my painting and that's going to be some fly specking and I'm going to use an old toothbrush and some blending gel so that my fly specking does not run and bleed. But I'm going to dip my brush, my toothbrush this time into some water and I'm going to pick up some sap green and a little bit of burnt umber and I'm going to mix those colors together so that I have a nice dark green going to add a little bit of the blending gel to this and add a little bit more water because you have to have some water in order to make your fly speck and come off the toothbrush. Then the most important thing is to practice on a surface that's not your final painting. So I'm going to come onto my palette. I'm going to turn the bristles facing the surface that I want to spatter and I'm going to use my index finger and I'm going to pull toward me. That way I'll make the paint spatters fly off the toothbrush and onto the surface where I want them and not back in my face where I don't want them. So you can see just with a light flick of my finger that I've created a variety of specks. And now we're going to come on to our surface and I'm going to add more fly speckles along this edge and at the bottom than I will have over there. And so I can very carefully control where my spatters are going by watching where they're spattering off of the toothbrush. So I think coming on and adding some heavier spatters at the bottom of the design and letting it kind of trail off in either direction really loosens up the design and makes it much more visually interesting. Now the blending gel will keep the individual fly specks from hitting your surface and spreading out too much. So Take some time to practice your fly specking on another surface before you go on to your painting. And you'll soon be adding lots of little fly specks to many things that you paint because it really does add so much to your painting. Today we learned about adding background color around our design, using side load shading, and even adding interest with some fly specking. I'd like to invite you to join our online group, Let's Paint with Plaid, on Facebook and become part of our Let's Paint community. Please visit plaidonline.com forward slash let's paint. You'll find all sorts of information about our skill builder videos, Let's Paint Live, studio lessons, and Folk Art One Stroke Flower of the Month with Donna Dewberry.